In the Wild West town of Last Stand, a female gunslinger enters a standoff between the townsfolk, led by Batlash, and bandits led by Jonah Hex. Hex explains the town is populated by gold miners, ranch and farm owners, who were supposed to pay protection interest at their money. Those were some moves you had downstairs. Get the face. By trusting the wrong people, and everyone is happy. And then greed shows its ugly face and... He asks for her help to bring order, but she's from a wagon loaded with dynamite. Why are you making trouble with Hex's man? Because sometimes trouble's Farmer gonna be... dig gold. You don't have a dog in this fight. And why... Hex calls her a wonder, and the townsfolk call her an angel. When Batlash asks for her name, she cannot remember, and it feels strange to her. Later that night, while distracting Hex so the townsfolk can retrieve supplies, she learns that Hex's men have hijacked a train to transport explosives and destroy the townsfolk's fort. She derails the train as Lash evacuates the townsfolk, but Hex kills Lash. <sighs> Nothing's over until In a fit of rage, she beats Hex near death before silently leaving the town. Would you have stayed? On Skartaris, the warlord Travis Morgan takes a mercenary sent by his archenemy, the wizard Daimos, as a slave to work in the mines. <laughs> but the mercenary offers to take warlord and his army to Daimos' castle, in exchange for freedom and gold. While traveling to the castle, the army is attacked by several monsters, and Warlord's best warriors Mariah Romanova is captured, and Machista is killed. How dare I am more than mere flesh of blood. I am the ruler of Skelataris. The mercenary struggles with unfamiliar knowledge and memories. In the castle, after evading several death traps, the mercenary finds a throne room full of treasure with Mariah and a slave woman shackled to the throne. The mercenary, the back with us. No. I need to find home. Come with us, Morgan. The mercenary and slave woman realize they need to find their way home and leave via a portal. In the 1950s town of Grover's Mill, federal agents Clark Kent and King Faraday investigate reports of a crashed UFO. Um, uh, at 0700 hours, strange lights were seen over the town of Grover's Mill. In space, all right. But think farther. This might just qualify. It's up to us to interrogate. No matter what. They go to a diner to meet with state trooper Bruce Wayne, Diana Prince, and other witnesses. Kent, Wayne, and Prince hear eerie music which no one else can hear. All the diner's patrons are revealed to be white Martians who pursue Kent, Wayne, and Prince to the crashed UFO. Inside, they find a green Martian who a hysterical Faraday insists they kill. Feels familiar. After Kent subdues Faraday, the room transforms, and they realize that the world around them was an illusion except for them, Faraday and the Martian, whom they deduce is a prisoner and free. The Martian introduces himself as John Jones, and he reveals to the three who they really are, and that the four of them had been taken captive by a Zeta Beam teleporter, with Johns' psychic abilities being harnessed to project illusions on the artificial planet Warworld, which is powered by the violence and fear of its prisoners. He had also been attempting to lead them back to reality via telepathic messages. 
Lobo subdues Kent, Wayne, and Prince, and brings Johns to Mongol, who had hoped Johns would have the key to harness Warworld's planet-destroying power. Seeking to take Warworld for himself, Lobo stalls Mongol as he is about to execute Johns. Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman recover their costumes and fight their way to Mongol's throne room, while Johns possesses and merges with a white Martian, revealing that the two halves of the key were hidden between both Martian races. Possessing both halves, Jones uses the key to activate Warworld's self-destruct sequence. A mysterious woman rescues Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, and teleports them back to safety at the Monitor's satellite, just in time before Warworld explodes. She states that Warworld's destruction is nothing compared to the forthcoming crisis. Alright, that's Batman and Superman, Battle of the Super Sons recaps. If you like video like this, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe this channel.